in radio for undiluted, unadulterated. It's probably replicated, but still not yet duplicated. It's sports only on Unlimited TV radio. I seriously love listening to it. Hello, everybody. What's up, people? My name is Timmy Dakolo, and you're listening to Elegbete TV Radio. Stay tuned. What's up, y'all? This is Tupac. Hey, hey, this is Lady Gaga. What's up, y'all? I'm Beyonce. This is Mason Jackson. This is your boy, Baby Jazz. Hey, this is Justin Bieber. Hey, what's up, y'all? Kelly Clarkson. Hey, what's up? This is 56. This is your boy, Flo Rida. Believe that. Yo, what's the deal? This is Ja Rule. This is Kesha. This is David Gera. What's up with Destiny's Child? This is your boy, Drake. Hi, this is Rihanna. Hey, this is Tom Cruise. Yo, what up? This is Big Show, yo. I'm trying to like it, y'all. This is your boy, Twisted in the house. Hey, this is Taylor Swift, and you're listening to... You're listening to... Yeah, thank you. Check this out. Check it out. This is... What's up? This is Big Will Smith. Hey, check this out, man. This is your boy, Joe Troll. This is Ron Manson. Hi, this is Madonna. What up, this is Lupe Fiasco. Hey, this is Jay-Z. Hey, what's up? 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 This is Jay-Z. Hey, what's up?
It's a pitch is 10 foot for his grade. It's not between Shandai. Remember Shandai? Okay. And uh, the man himself, the squatter, the guy who loves to squat. I'm talking about Marcelo Biesa, uh, Gis, or what have it, that that is the guy who Pep Guardiola actually led from and got anointed from. Okay. So it's a combination of him and your craft that determine how Pep Guardiola coaches. That's uh, a different topic for another day. Talking about Pep Guardiola, today we would have uh, Pep Guardiola in the evening play against his uh, protege. Yes, one of his best proteges. And you know the funny thing is, uh, the boys, the proteges of Pep Guardiola are pretty doing well. Uh, Burnley are coming back to the Premier League thanks to, thanks to Vision Company. Uh, but Colotori, after nine games uh, with Wigan, have been fired. When he got a job, I said, yeah, that he would not last, that he would be fired. People said I was biased, I was hating on the black man, blah, blah, blah. So black man is not going to be long on the job. They just gave him that job to be the John the Baptist that will be beheaded by Herod for Jesus to come. So uh, somebody has to take the job now. And that automatically cuts him off completely uh, from coaching. You will see eventually he will not start looking for the coaching job of the Ivory Coast. Take my word for it. That's what's going to happen. He will start looking for the coaching job of the Ivory Coast. Or probably uh, Yaya Tori who is still trying to get his badge. I hope he doesn't fail his exam. You know, he used to say that Pep Guardiola doesn't know how to coach. I can't wait for Yaya Tori to coach. Like, Yaya I can't... Now, say, listen, guys, I'm not beefing Yaya Tori. I'm not, you know, uh, talk, trash-talking him. But I think that footballers, uh, sometimes they don't have sense when they start attacking coaches unnecessarily, right? Because they want everything to go through them, to work for them. I, I, I can't wait to see Yaya Tori coach and turn, see the type of coach that he will be. I'll be happy if he turns out to be a great coach, but I'll also be here to criticize him if he starts benching players because he, he thought that benching him uh, was uh, racist and hatred. We'll see. And then did I say that it's a Yaya Tori coach that made it impossible for Pep Guardiola to win another Champions League? I don't know how true that is, but fingers crossed we will see how that goes. Well, there's a whole lot of things that are there. Yesterday, we started talking about some of the worst transfers ever in the history of the January transfer window. Uh, we would continue on that. We would also talk about some of the biggest, craziest upsets that have happened in the English FA Cup. We'll talk about that one on the show today. We'll give you all the transfer rumors that we have according to the BBC. And then we would uh, also get involved. Uh, this weekend was supposed to be in Akure, but we would not be there. Okay, so the organizers of the league have come out with a format that I love, that is good. And they said that uh, after we did the game in just a lot of people said that, oh, uh, who's this small boy? Who's this small boy that you guys are just giving them uh, so much access, this, 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 and uh, give other people a chance to let it be fair. Okay, they, they reached out to me. I said, hey, it be, for us, we would have loved to go with you 100%. We love what you did in just and we want to continue. The people that went to you did do the good job in the first game. We acquired a better insurance. But then people are saying, that you know it is not a fair thing to just throw all the star matches to one person and i mean it's an it's an upcoming person so let's give other people a chance and i said to them good good idea uh give them a chance uh and let's see what they do it's also good that way because sometimes i always say that the victory is sweeter if you have to conquer a lot of solid teams solid opposition Rather than, you know, that's why the FA Cup that Ateta won was beautiful. When you look at the opposition he played against in that short Roma City, Man United, Chelsea, you know, all those teams that he played against. And you say, okay, good. This was a good one. It can't just be fluke. It can't just be luck. He did play against some, uh, you know, uh, hopeless teams. Yeah. So I, I think it's good. Uh, again, for the good of the Nigerian League, it is also nice that we don't have a monopoly. We are not in a place where we can have a monopoly yet. So as much as I won't lie to you. As much as I desperately want to broadcast every game, and, and when I say every game, all the 10 games every weekend or every match day, I want to be there if I can magically do it. I think that that's a personal interest. When it comes to the general ecosystem, I think it is good to have a lot of people that can do this job. So that one day when there is sponsorship and there is good funding and they want to, hey, Johnny Gaffer, thank you very much. I see that. And they want to like, okay, so okay, let's stream all the 10 games. Let's put all the 10 game television. We will not have a pool of people who can, hey, you go to Yo, you go to Benin, you go to Aba, you go to Joss, you go to Gobe, you go to Kano. Like there'll be a lot of people and people can stretch into the lower league. 
it will be good for Nigerian football. Am I sad that we're not doing a game immediately after like building on the momentum? Yes. Am I am I sad that uh, they're breaking that flow? Yes. But if I think about what I've always said about the ecosystem, I'm excited that what we've done, I've also made other people throw their hats in the ring. I said, okay, you know what? We can give you the swing if you think I can do it. And that's always what I've been preaching. I said, listen, if I come out here and I put up enough quality work, somebody's going to see what I am doing and decide to do the same. Because Nigerians, if there's one thing that we're very good at, we're very competitive. I would like to copy people, copy what others are doing, whether it's good or it's bad. So I, I think I'm happy that, okay, I've been able to do this and people like it. So uh, it's nice. I'm sad that we're not doing the game uh, over the weekend because it would have helped us to fine-tune. Let's be honest. Guys, you love what we did in just, but if I was watching that thing, that production by somebody else, I would not rate it past 50%. And for me, I'm going to give myself 45 or maximum 50% for what we did in just. We could do better. Yeah, you know, we've come out, we put in a lot of clips out there. People like it. The comments and the, 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 the support is great. And people have people have reached out to me that I don't know that they were following me like since forever, you know. But from US, Australia, different part of the world, which is beautiful, right? But I, I think that if we put Nigeria football, like the Premier League now, you see, you don't have only Sky Sports. You have Sky Sports, you have BT Sports, you have Amazon, you have ITV, you have B, uh, Bean, uh, everybody, BBC. That's the kind of thing that we would love to have, okay? If we have that in Nigeria, that is glorious. Like, when you say glorious, that will be very, very glorious. So, I think that as far as I'm concerned, uh, while maybe, you know, the Oliver in me saying, hey, wish, uh, I wish they keep me, you know, going for like 10 more games before they decide to bring another, like another person uh, to come and do it. I think that I'm happy that people are throwing their hats in the ring. Uh, one game that I can guarantee you that I would be bring bringing to you live is the game Gombe United versus Split Two United. I think it's in three weeks' time, three weeks from now, uh, four weeks from now, three or four weeks from now. Gombe United, Split Two United. That is guaranteed casting stone set for me. But let, let's see what happened with this game this weekend. Uh, uh, the Sunshine Stars game in Akure. And then probably there is also the Aimba game, there is the Bayesa United game that would happen next week and then the, the week that follows. Maybe we'll be in on the run in the game. But whatever we call upon, our 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 arsenals are, you know, that there's enough bullets in it. The, the machines are where I iron, we're prepped up, we're ready. All the ones that, that got damaged will replace and uh, we'll send them some for repairs and we are ready to rock and roll. Well, let's end the show. Uh, let's get the show going and push it forward. Always put Nigeria first. And again, please, when the weekend comes and they are streaming the game. Because we're not doing it, does not mean you guys should not follow. Follow it, uh, watch it, put your beautiful comments. If you, I mean, if you see what is good, comment it, uh, comment it, and uh, let's push Nigeria football forward. Uh, don't make it about me, but make it about the ecosystem. And it is better to build the ecosystem than to build an individual. I've always said systems prevail over individual. America have had stupid president back to back, but because they have a functioning system. It doesn't really affect the country, okay? People think that, oh, it's only in Nigeria where you have a, a president that doesn't work. I mean, America have a president that is almost brain dead uh, uh, right now, and you have one that was a Twitter president. But because the system was good, it didn't really affect the country. So let's focus on systems more than individual. Thank you very much. Now let's get the show on the road. Yes, like I was saying before, Pep Guardiola had a whole lot to talk about at Teta, And you could see... That as much as he's praising Ateta, as much as he's saying good words about Ateta, he feels some pain. You could see that there is pain that he lost at Ateta because Ateta seemed to be like someone that, whoa, that he missed, you know. And, and, and there, there was one line where he said he could have stayed here, he could have taken over from him, he would have been the next coach that would coach the team, uh, that when they were playing, when they were together, every time Man City scored against any other opponent, you will see Ateta celebrate, jump, get excited. But there's one team, one team where Man City scores against, and Man City really does score a lot of goals against Arsenal. And he's sitting on the chair. He's not celebrating. And he was always wondering, this guy, are you with me or are you against me? But hey, when the chance came, and then I like how he ended that. He said, look, listen, it's the same with me. 
No matter what happened, whatever I'm doing, what team I'm coaching, what team I'm training, if Barcelona calls me, I'm going because that's my home. And, and that, that feels good. I like the honesty and genuineness of his words, of his comments about Ateta. And I also like the genuineness of Ateta's comment about him, like, oh, he's my master. I've always looked up for him. I've known him. I, I mean, we've, we've said this thing over 15 years ago that whenever we go into coaching, we work together. So it's not something that just started by accident. And that's something that I always tell my people, especially those guys in the Elevator TV family, once I'm to them, that in life, be deliberate, be strategic, and be intentional. Anything you do, that's why I like, there's a guy called Coach Ayuri, he's in Dubai right now. I love the guy, Chris, I love the guy badly. Like, he's very deliberate, he's very intentional, he's very strategic about his career, where he wants to be, how he wants to do it, and all that. So, for me, that's how life should be. You should be very, very deliberate, strategic, especially concerning your life and whatever business or industry you are in. Be very, very strategic, be deliberate. Let people, you know, like I always said to people, have a signature. Well, I remember when I was still in Brilla, I told people that, look, one of the things that I want to have, I want to be, like, I want to have a, a, a signer that is so fast, Every time people see me on the road, they will stop and say, hey, they have to do that thing for me because we can't believe that a human being can talk like that. That was just me because it was a fast-talking sports radio and I needed to be the fastest. Okay, so I have a very, very bad habit. I hate to lose. I'm a very, very competitive, very, very competitive person. Fiesty when it comes to competition. I hate to lose. Like, I don't understand all those things. It doesn't mean, yeah, I can say that, say that, whatever it would be, it would be. Shut up. No, win. <laughs> I want to win. I let the person who lose be saying, I don't want to, hey, no, 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 the next time we'll come and win. I shut up. What's wrong with you? Why can't you win now? And then win the next one. And then win the next one. And win the next one. And win the next one. That's why I go into Hot Taco back in the day with all that I've got. Like, I mean, people, when you listen to that Hot Taco, like, are they really fighting? Are these people friends? Are they colleagues? Because I'm, I will do anything. I will pull down your pants. I will off your microphone. I, I will punch you if I need to. You understand? I will throw jabs at you that will take you on balance because I just want to win, right? I'm, 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 Jesus Christ, I'm obsessed about winning. I like winning. The feel of winning is like waking up to a bank a lot. It's very, very, very beautiful, okay? All right, let's get the show on the road. And uh, where do we start from now? Uh, I'm going to read all your messages, but just uh, let's uh, go to the transfer rumors. We don't have all the time in this world. 15 minutes is gone. So let's start with transfer gist on the on the rumor of the yeah 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 that they're talking about transfer uh, uh that's the one that i want to look at uh i need to see an optician i begin to have i'm gonna struggle with my side too gradually okay chelsea may have to do plans to sign french right back melo gusto okay it's 19 years in january with leon president jean michael allis commits coming out to say he expect the player to remain in france until at least the summer so that deal on ice, okay? Put it on ice, put it on ice, champagne. The goal was disallowed. We are disallowed the goal, no celebration. Come, come, come down, come down. Come down. Uh, how does Murphy say? JJ Wild. Oh, yeah, JJ Wild. Yes, uh, JJ Wild. They should relax. Why, why? Take it easy. Uh, we're coming. Turn down more are confident that uh, a deal for Sporting Lisbon and Spain defender Pedro Poro, okay, will be finalized in the coming days. Uh, for this in the end of the transfer, I think it's going to be done uh, before Monday anyway. Okay, so... That's not that's not a problem with that one. Uh, okay, we'll be done before the coming days after difficulties in negotiations over the 23 year old release clause. Okay, that's according to 90 minutes. Everton are expected to drop their 60 million asking price for English winger Anthony Gordon 21 and accept around 40 million pounds plus add ons after their original valuation put Newcastle off completely and the player have gone on strike. Small boy. Small boy with a biggie mind. Okay, having missed uh, the last three days of training, Gordon has told Everton he has no intention of returning to the club as he tries to first through a move to Newcastle. Wow, small boy with a biggie heart. Okay, Chelsea uh, want to sign Everton midfielder Amado Onana, but while the 21 year old Belgian international has turned down the move as he wants to focus on helping the relegation threatening toughies uh, for the rest of the season, the situation could still change as uh, the case may be. Let's see how that goes anyway. Onana is also an option for Arsenal who wants to sign a midfielder desperately. Is that the guy that Arsenal need? I don't know. For you as an Arsenal fan, uh, is Onana the guy that Arsenal need as backup for Thomas Partey? Uh, who would you suggest that Arsenal sign as backup for Thomas Partey? And I'm also asking, uh, now that uh, Eddie Nketiah is doing the things that he's doing, he's shutting me up, giving me humble pie to eat, and I'm eating it with a smile on my face, and do you think that Arsenal should still 
you know, look for a striker in the summer because definitely now they're not going to look for a striker anymore. But you think that they should still look for a striker in the summer? I just think that Gabriel Jesus might not come back the same way he was before he went on break on that injury from the World Cup. Meaning that Arsenal now, Arsenal's main striker, oh God, I never thought that this would happen anyway. Arsenal's main striker leading to the end of the season is going to be Eddie Ketier. But wait a minute, hypothetically, Okay, so but have, have we not seen this thing before? We've seen this thing before, right? We've seen this thing somewhere, somehow, at Highbury before. 97, 98 season. Iron Wright was the main striker. He's been scoring, banning goal. I've become the, uh, the, the all-time high goal scorer. 178 goes against uh, Bolton Wanderers. And then somewhere along the line, he got injured. And one small boy, one small French boy that was brought in for $500,000, at the time, came in, boom, completely obliterated, uh, uh, what's it called, and right, so much so that during the World Cup in France 98, this is something you guys don't know, uh, for those of you who think that Asamega is a good guy, Asamega went to France, went to uh, a right in the hotel room, and told him, guy, we're cutting you. Now, let me tell you how that thing played out. So, a room there are two rooms, right? There are two executive rooms. That this room was the room that Asamanga and Davide was on. They used it as their office and they met with a right. A low, no agent, nobody. I told him that we're continue. You're not going to continue with us. It, this guy just lost out of the World Cup. And the next room was Western. So Asna had already planned it, decided that this guy, you have to go. And they've agreed with Western to let a right go for whatever fee they, they've agreed on without even consulting with the player. That's the most ruthless, most heartless, most evil, most demeaning thing that anybody would do. And a cotton. Well, that's a topic. That's another day we're going to talk about that. We're talking about some of the most ruthless transfers that has ever happened in football. Okay. Or sackings that has ever happened in football. Well, Aneka took over and he did what he did. That's now won the double. Stares, as they say, is history. He moved for 35 or is it 32 million dollars? And that money was used to build the, the Arsenal training facility and the rest, as they say, his history went on to win the Champions League with Real Madrid, uh, scoring that header against Bayern Munich, blah, 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 playing for Chelsea, Liverpool, Bolton Wanderers, and all the other clubs that he played for. Anelka, still one of the great players that played in the Premier League. Love the guy to the very bone marrow. Young boy who's got a heart. Another player with heart. But I think that Amir Jaki actually destroyed him by not taking him to the World Cup in 98. But that's a topic for another day. Let's just move forward and see. Uh, Chelsea, Newcastle, and Manchester United are all interested in the Netherlands and Inter Milan defender uh, Denzel de Vries with Inter Milan setting the price of 40 million euros. And that's a very small money. That's 5 million pounds, right? But the Vries, I'm not saying that the Vries is oh, world class. Oh, that lot of defense. Come and no. But I think he's a quality player that can get better if uh, given proper coaching and backed up with proper quality players around him. So for a 26-year-old, I think that that's good money. But wait, I don't know what the clubs I want to buy are thinking. Arsenal, I've been told they will have to pay Real Sociedad, Mifidas, uh, Martin, Zubrimen, the 60 million euro, which is 52.8 million pounds release clause if they want to sign the 23-year-old Spain International in this January. Okay, let's see. I don't think that's not are willing to pay that money. But I know why uh, the Spanish side are saying that they don't want to sell and they know that Arsenal was willing to pay 80, 88 or 89 million euros you know, if you had the add-ons uh, for Mikhail Madrid. So if you have that money, you've got to spend it. But Arsenal have also paid money for Trussard and for, uh, what's it called, Patrick uh, Kiwa, whatever the name is. And they cannot just continue to spend money. Like, I don't think Arsenal is going to spend that money. Anyway. Arsenal will find a way to get another player. But now, uh, and then he's injured. Arsenal needs a midfielder and they need a quick. Because, listen, Thomas Marty can pull a hamstring. He can be kicked. He can be tackled. And this season is gone. Whatever you guys like about the 50 point, Arsenal is just halfway through the season. Exactly in the middle of the season. So, things can go wrong. Run a bad result can happen. That position, what's that position? is uh affected everything will go wrong but then again that's what we also said about gabriel jesus when gabriel jesus got injured first i doesn't get striker in 
where would the goals come from? As now we lose matches, blah, 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 blah. Before the double header against Spurs and uh, Man United, I remember everybody said, this is the moment where Arsenal drop point again out of the top four. If Man I remember Man United fans saying this like, if Man U beat Crystal Palace and Arsenal lose to Tottenham Espo, and then Man U go again and do the double over Arsenal, and then just Man City also beat Arsenal, Arsenal will be in third position, Man U will be second or first, and blah, 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 blah. But we see where we are now. Arsenal five point clear. Win the game in hand, it'll be eight point clear. But today they're playing the FA Cup. You, 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 and you are there watching, listening. What do you think is going to be the outcome of this game? Would the servant, okay, the sorcerer's apprentice, uh, destroy the sorcerer, or would the sorcerer be too powerful, too magically powerful for the apprentice? What's going to happen today? That's what I want to know. Remember, the sorcerer also destroyed one of his apprentices, six goes to three earlier on in the season. But then the sorcerer's apprentice came back and destroyed the sorcerer, two goes to one, even though aided by controversial refereeing decision. But whatever it was, they were beaten. So where do you stand in this conversation? Manchester City at Etihad against Arsenal. Arsenal have not won uh, at Etihad since God knows when. And Arsenal even had least scores there. Uh, I think Pep Guardiola have won 14 out of 16 against Arsenal and scored a truckload of goals. Goals that are good enough for a team to survive relegation. Not maybe not good enough to win the league, but the goals that Pep Guardiola's Man City have scored against Arsenal since he came to England uh, if they put them together, there are enough goals, if you defend well, to survive relegation. Probably be mid-table, not go to Europe or mid-table. Well, let's move on in the transfer gist as we talk. Yeah, Leeds United are ready to pay $25 million for Juventus and USA midfielder Weston McKenney, who is 24. All these guys are Asian, they had a good one. I don't know that guy, not really, I play ball for my eye. But hey, Ogbori, uh, Ogbori, they get good agents sometimes. Bournemouth are interested in signing. Nobody's talking about Paul Olu. I've not heard his name in any conversation. Okay? I'm, I'm, I'm surprised. I know, don't you guys need a striker that we put the ball in? Uh, all those kind of clubs that are not going to get relegated, they look like they are on the precipice of going to Conference League or the uh, Europa Cup. Let you go outside uh, on what you... Uh, you shouldn't be scoring on those plenty goals. But, you know, two more seasons now, you could not hold. Yes, two more seasons now. You know, we'll not be there anymore. And all this talk, Seth, let's talk about a player that will not be there. I'll just talk about my United signing Harry Kane. I'm just thinking, and I'm going to say this is very, very popular opinion. I think that Pep, uh, Jose Mourinho did a little bit of damage to uh, Harry Kane. So when Jose Mourinho came, Jose Mourinho changed the way he plays because uh, Son Yumi was running faster than, than Harry Kane. So what he did was tell Harry Kane to drop deep and be fetching the ball and be supplying that has now removed that, you know, dastardly instinctive play of a goal scorer out of Hurricane. Because sometimes Hurricane gets the ball, he's looking to find Harry, uh, 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 Son Yumi, but Son Yumi's form has dropped. Since he went to join, do his military training, something just entered his head. He just like they gave him some drugs, some cocaine, some bullet powder to sniff. Uh, he's trying and always quarreling on the field. He used to play, he used to be very this, this very humble guy who just play football quietly, be on his own. Get the job done, but since he went to do that thing, I don't know if you want them to be calling him Sergeant Son or Sergeant Son or Commander Son or General Son or Emperor Son. You mean maybe they should add that to his name and then he would be behaving well because since he came back from that one year military service, that's how he's he has lost his, his head. He shot his teammate, quarrel with Hugo Lloris, quarrel with Lucas Mora, quarrel with uh, Perisic. I uh, heard Perisic tell us, Oh, guy, you know, Chris, hey, Poku, if I beat you, you're mad. Five, 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 slap a shot like a, a key holder. So if I slap you, come on, stop on corner. Well, th th you guys didn't watch that pressure. Why well, that? That's why I saw. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Jackson's injury. Okay, no, 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 I'm not dead. Bournemouth are interested in signing Roma and Italy midfielder Nicolas Agnolo. One more 23 year old with uh, their move for Villarreal and Senegal forward Nicolas Jackson. Like, see, they just want a player that have Nico on their name. Mm -hmm. Since they couldn't get Nicholas Jackson, who's 21, they're looking for Nicola, Nicolas and all. Okay, no worry. Looking like it has hit a stumbling block over medical concern. Meanwhile, Jackson's injury issues have prompted Bournemouth to make a third bid for Bristol City and Ghana forward Antoine uh 23. Is that you cast as uh, brother? Which City boss Nigel Pearson admit has uh, been accepted? Okay, 
going, going, going. That's exactly what's happening there. Essie Milan also wants to sign Zaniolo, but are interested in 25-year-old France and Newcastle forward Alan St. Maximan. That guy is, uh, what's he called? What's that guy who was with the World uh, Guarantee for Body? Um, Adamatrori 2.2. Adamatrori 2.2. I don't like him. St. Maximan. Nah, nah, nah. I don't know how that kind of player my team. Mm. Woo! I can't have that kind of player in my team. Adam Atari? No. Wilfred Bunny? No. Um, Alan San Maxima? Nah. Wilfred Zaha? Nah. Others? Uh, Nicolas Pepe? Nah. Useless. Why is that useless player? As far as I'm concerned. Uh, players? Nah. Nah, 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 nah. I don't like, I don't like all these kind of players. No way, no way. Southampton are keen on Rens and Ghana winger. Kalmadin Sulemania, okay? The 20-year-old 20, the 20 was the fastest player at the World Cup. I was previously attacking interest from, attracting interest from fellow Premier League strugglers Everton, but not Everton that have money to buy. Southampton will try to buy. See, if this guy's speed can carry and read them away from relegation. Let's see if that can happen. Leeds are set to allow the English forward Jogara 20 to join promotion chasing championship side Sunderland alone until the end of the season. Manchester United could make a 105 million pounds bid for Napoli striker Victor, wait for it, Victor Gladiator, Omar Voodoo. Oh, God of heaven. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking that. I'm liking that. My United does look like next season they would chase for it. They would, they would, they would uh, compete for the title. So uh, I'm, not, I'm not really, uh, you know, against it. But I said that that money, one one oh five. See, Eric Ten Hag and his people. Let me tell you who this guy is, in case you don't know who you are signing. This guy reminds me of somebody who made this statement. Listen to the statement carefully. My name is Maximus Deximus Meridius, commander of the armies of the general of the Felix Legion, loyal servant to the true emperor, Marcus Aurelius, father to a murdered son, husband to a murdered wife. And I will have my vengeance in this life or in the next. That's who Victor Osime remind me of. That's a guy that you are prizing. I'm telling you, one oh five million, Johnny Gaffa, you might not be happy. One oh five million for Victor Osime, that's crap. Make it change the five, swap swap the five. Make it one hundred and fifty million, and then we will have a talk. Then I'm, I'm officially his agent for today, for just for today. 150 million. I will talk. I will call him myself and I'll tell him, Victor, go on strike. I got up after winning the league title in Italy. I need you to win that league title and do it by scoring 25 or more goals. Because a certain Gonzalo Igwe scored 36 goals for Napoli some time ago. They didn't win the title. Win the title for them and tell them, go to Aurelio de Laurenti and say, Listen, guy, hey, what's up, Amica? I've done what you wanted. For years, it's 19 in short, since you bought this club, you have never won the league title. I have done it for you single-handedly. I destroyed Juventus. Remember, when Juventus were, were coming like a, 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 a mighty rushing wind, the spirit of Osime raised the standard against them by scoring two and assisting one. And we beat them. We massacred them very well. The slaughter of Juventus at the Maradona Stadium was the beginning of leading us to the way, parting the Red Sea for us to walk into our Jordan of title uh, winner. So I want to go to the Premier League and also go and help another club that have been suffering uh, for 600 years. I want to go save them. If I can do it with you, I can do it with them. Yeah, I think I would, even me personally, I would call Aurelio. Aurel, Aurel, hey, Aurelio, what's up? Hey, how you doing? It's just, Napoli wins the league title. I'm traveling to Italy. That's uh, as far as I'm concerned. Hey, I'll say, hey, hey, Omar, I know you've been going to Italy. Like, they know you. You are your money layer. You are the ballet. But me, I'm coming. I'm a visitor. I would... I would not step on your, your toes. Your toes, your shoes are too big. I'm not going to feel it. But I'm just going to, I'm a local guy who do the Nigerian League. I'm okay with that. But our son, our son, our son has won the league. I've done what, uh, what Osime cannot do does not exist. I've done it. So, let's talk. So, Manchester United, hey, uh, take it up. Take it up a notch. Take it up a notch, eh? Yeah, I like, I like the fact that you're attempting to, but take it up a notch. And then we would have this conversation. In case you guys didn't understand what I'm saying, Manchester United could make a 105 million pounds bid uh, for Napoli striker Victor Sime, but the move for the 23-year-old 
forward would likely not come onto the summer. We all know that. We all know that. We need to use a, a, some respect to Napoli. You have to win the title. You can't you can't bring them this close and then leave there. What, what's wrong with you? You can't you can't allow somebody to do smooshing and kissing and touching and everything, taking clothes off and everything, uh only the light, putting it in the mood, playing the music. I wanna uh you up hey uh, 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 that me baby yeah I put out this music and I say I'm not in the mood and my period uh Tonda will kill you. So let them win the league title first and then we'll talk about this. Hey, somebody say what's what's worrying me today. Yes, the thing that is worrying me, I'm having fun. That's what's worrying me. Okay. And uh, Manchester United are also looking to send 19-year-old English forward Charlie McNeil, Dutch defender, Bojan Hadsley. 20 an English defender Dishon Bernard 22 at on loan in the January transfer. I would I thought they wanted to send those players to Napoli. I would have said Tonda. Uh, I have those believe people say, I'll be go kill you there. Uh, I mean, I'll, 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 I'll go kill you there. Okay, that's 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 what I would have said, but uh, they, they put it well, so we're not going to talk about that one. I thought they were saying, Give us a Sime for 105 plus all these rejects, all these yeah, yeah players. Oh, 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 go, oh, go, kill them. <laughs> oh, God, I wish I was sucking like this when I was a brother. Like, God, uh, suck me, see them. That suck me. Tay, tay. Uh, you don't be mad. You are crazy, right? Okay, so yesterday, I started this series when I was talking to you guys about some of the flops, some of the shittiest transfer ever done. And I ask you guys to remind me of some of them. You guys did not get in on the conversation anyway, but I will say, I remember we stopped at number 13, Fernando Morientes. Yes, Morientes. There used to be a guy in what we call O'Reilly to Tisha. We used to call him Morientes. That boy can find a goal from anywhere. As a matter of fact, if uh, uh, that bricklayer from Okitipupa, uh, Brother Kamaru, if Brother Kamaru put a brick, what? You know, it's, Brother Kamaru is a brick, brick killer. It's not brick layer, there's missing. There's Bricklayer, and then there's the Yoruba Bricklayer. Yeah, Brother Kamaru. Kamaru is a Bricklayer. If he mowed a wall in the goalpost, eh, I put bricks on the goalpost. I leave it to dry. Good major press that shake. Uriah will find a hole and score a goal. That guy, but Smokey Papa, and some other artists like that, the radar, but that's very, very fantastic player. Two people that like, like Benedo Siva or the receiver kind of player. Three could two, he can find a hole, he can find a pass, can find a goal, score a free kick. I used to marvel at him, like when I watch him play in the college, I used to marvel at him, like you know, when they trip for your 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 age mates, and I hardly do that. Okay, I'm too proud, I'm too proud to trip for my age mate, but that guy used to marvel. I like watching him, like wow, wow, like I used to marvel at him, but hey, it's like, yeah, Fernando Marriages was uh. In case you don't know when he was signed, let me bring him up so that you know that's what we'll start. Fernando Marantes, Real Madrid to Liverpool for 6.3 million in 2005. Okay, Fernando Marantes was on a 13 game goalless streak and had scored three times in 21 games on for Real Madrid prior to moving to Liverpool. But Benitez brought him because he wants to do racket, he wants to survive the man. I think they both worked together somewhere in Valencia sometime before. Uh, which, uh, what did the Reds manager of Benitez expect? What he got was 12 goals in 61 games from Morentes. Orente and number 12 on the list was Dego Fola. Now, this one is just a flop at Manchester United. doesn't make him a flop. He's a good player. It's also the same way with Fernando Morentes. You can't call him a bad football player. One is a great guy. But this guy came to Manchester United and signed. So I said, I don't know. Signed him for 6.9 million and then began to hate him. And then also Roy Kane and some other players in the dressing room, they like him. Okay. Because he was a player who had a mind of his own. Yeah, I mean, he's from South America. What do you expect? He had a mind of his own. And a lot of people didn't like him because of that. Okay, uh, he moved from Independent to Manchester United in 2001, and this is the story. Uh, in Silas Sogas's autobiography, he wrote about Ruth Van Nistelrooy's inability to combine with Diego Forlan. How do you expect a, a, a goal puncher to combine with a ball, a ball dazzler? It's not possible. Another striker who ran up against a problem of Ruth singularity was for Lan, a grand player. Rude wanted to be the number one finisher. That was his nature. Diego Forlan didn't register on his radar at all. So when you put the two of them out there together, there was zero chemistry. Rude Van Nistelrooy did not have chemistry with anybody. Even in the national team, that's why he couldn't play with Patrick Clive. 
So Ruth Van Nistra is one of those kind of players, another Cristiano Ronaldo, me, myself, and I, if it's not me, nobody else. Okay, talk about Cristiano Ronaldo, Al Nassar just got eliminated from the FA Cup. Stifler, Stifler is always a Stifler. Stifler Juventus, Stifler Manchester United, now nah, collecting big money, risk to watch party, but stifling the club again. Okay, Cristiano Ronaldo is finding out now that uh, Saudi Arabia football is not as easy as I think. He can be dribbling people are using them to rob ground, but nobody is going to just shout, hey, hey, Allah, what about you? Shukra, shukra, and then you guys go, no way, it's not going to happen. They will, you will work for that money. That money that they're paying you, what can we win now? Yes, so that I was, okay? It would later rebound post United by winning two European golden shoes and 2010 FIFA World Cup golden ball. So, you see, it's not a bad player. But then, there are some signings that just didn't work. One of them is this guy that I used to love when he played for Everton, okay? He was the kind of guy that I, just, I didn't want to play football like him, but he represented everything that English football forward used to be from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. English football forward, they're not flair, they're not skillful, they're not good. But as a white man, I could play with this kind of forward. You know why? Because I'm a good crosser of the ball. And I just want to know that you will be there when I, your postman, your DHL, your UPS, your uh, whatever, do you know, put the ball in the net, your FedEx. When I FedEx the ball uh, in the area that you are supposed to be, you got to be there. And as a delivery man, Nothing is as good as knowing that the person you're delivering to is at the point to receive the package. And that's who Duncan Ferguson was at Everton. But then he moved for $7 million in 1999, the year that church folks first disturbed all of us that this was going to be the end of the year, that the end of the world, that the trumpet was going to sound. Remember, if you were born in my era, the torture, this is why I don't like Nigerian pastors, who, the torture that Nigerian pastors gave us, eh, 1999, when I just... I just started having a million, but I bought my car, I was living my life, and, you know, having some fun, flangery, you know, having babes, like freedom to do the things that I want to do. I want just this group of people just came up, I said the world will end on the on the uh, 31st of December, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Why, Jesus, why you won't come? Who invite you? Who call you? Stay there. But, you know, it was a, was, was a lie. We not know, but, but let me just move forward with the gist. So that you know what I am saying, so that you know, you know, those things, ah, Pastor Shah, Pastor, my young pastor don't like give us a word. Okay, even a conviction for assault and question over Duncan Ferguson's body being able to hold up did not dissuade Newcastle United for paying what was a hefty amount at the time for him. Seven million was heavy, hefty amount. Okay, who was sold back to Everton a season and a half later as a loss. Okay, when he was back at Everton, he didn't live up to the billing. The basic truth is that since he came back to this football club, he has done nothing but drain away resources and Everton inside that told Jimmy Jackson of the Guardian. Wow. Now, there is one that you guys will also remember. And you can still have a tradition back in the day of signing rubbish player, just throwing money around. There's this guy called Gene Allen Bomsong. I'm sure you guys remember this guy's a French player, right? Rangers he was playing for Glasgow Rangers and he was doing pretty decent. Okay, he was pretty decent, like Joe Aribo was doing well for Rangers, and then he came, he came to the Premier League. Okay, he came to Newcastle in 2005 for eight million, and he just didn't get it right. Rangers made an eight million profit on a talented but wayward defender in Jane Allen Bumson. This guy, this guy was a tight tower of Newcastle. Like, it was just shit. Okay? In his first 10 league games for Newcastle United, he was part of a defense that kept two clean shit and suffered four successive defeats. Okay? His agent, his agent then somehow managed to get him employment with Juventus, Lyon, and Panathinaikos. Having a good agent is better than scoring goals like uh, Paul Onuachu. I've always said that. Having a good agent is 75% of the job. It's like doing television. Having a pretty face, woo! Is 75% of the job. And then you don't know how to talk, you're, you're, you're on the way up. Helen Horton, this guy, I remember him. He moved from Rangers again. Rangers have scammed Premier League team. Move. From Rangers again, forgetting that Rangers, Premier, the Celtic League, uh, Spanish League, uh, what's it called? The Scottish League is like like two levels below the NPFL. Okay? It's like the NLU. But people don't know. And you send player from there and come. Even TN is said that with all her talent, cannot even stand the, the, the pressure of the Premier League. It's always getting injured. Well, Rangers sold him for $9 million to Tottenham Hotspur in 2008. And that was all. 
Uh, they are because you guys have a better word. According to Scotland national team manager Gordon Strachan at the time, Alan Hudson is a changed man. When he played for Stoutland Sport and Aston Villa, he lacked defensive nuance. Okay, was cut out of position and was considered a body. This is why he was generally known as Sport spent nine million on a player who didn't even log 20 Premier League games, let alone 30 in one season. Fuck that Lord. Jesus Christ. Well, this one. I wouldn't really call him a flaw, but he doesn't do well for Man City. When Bridge, what happened when the story came out that uh, Captain John Terry was shagging his babe, he lost his ability to play football. It was good. It was good. It was part of the guys who uh, Claudio Ranieri used to break Asna's 10 years dominance over Chelsea. People said that uh, Uzo Moreira that didn't know it was the, uh, Ranieri that beat Asna 2 1 in the Champions League. Okay. Qualifying as a soul. He moved from Chelsea to Manchester City for 10 million pounds in 2009. And this guy couldn't play for what? If Manchester City were willing to pay when bridge 90,000 pounds a week, <laughs> City management should have known it would add stay is welcome. Okay? It was paid, train, and go on loan to three different clubs. Speaking to Neil Ashton at the Daily Mail, he painted a different image than someone earning easy money. He said, I'm feel and letting my mom and dad down and they basically leave for following me around and watching me play football. I hate that my parents can't come and watch me or Frankie, who loves to watch football, can't come with a mom and dad, okay? It is like I am letting them down as well because they are so proud to see me out there playing. They have been really supportive. Okay, now let's leave that one. Let's talk about this player that came to uh, West Ham for £10 million pounds all the way from Brescia. And uh, the reason this player was signed, he plays for a team that... Uh, uh, and Repella played for before, and uh, Roberto Baggio I played for, and they felt like anybody who played in those team would play well. I had a name that looked like a player that would do well. Okay, his name is Savio Nsereco. That's where it ended. I think it wasn't good, it was shit. Okay, Savio Nsereco is not one of Gianfranco Zola's greatest moments. Clearly, what happened was Zola being cons uh, called by one of his Italian counters. Savio lacked the Ambition did not look like a Premier League player and had issues off the field. His transfer was so odd that West Ham United commissioned an investigation over how it happened. That's how bad the player was. So bad that they have to investigate whether that fraud or not. What happened was, uh, uh, what's it called? Jan Frankenzola was a coach, called his old friends. All you people that are friends of people that are at the top, always do well to make sure you save them because this is a guy that got Zola sack. Call this runner, I need a good player that can help me. And then they brought this Savio Usereco, and he looked like somebody who is plotting coup in the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo. Scott Parker. Now, this one, I, I don't understand why he failed at Chelsea because a good player. He's turned out to be a good coach as well. You know him. It's a fiesta midfielder. He's got all that he takes. Was playing for Shatton Athletic and was doing well, was fighting the midfield, especially in games against Arsenal. He just loves to play against Arsenal. He was school shooting, marking, was there, was everywhere. He was the white party Vieira at the time. Chelsea got well, 10 million pounds when Arsenal wanted to sign him, as well as Arsenal wanted to play 7.5, but then just pulled out uh, 10 million pounds to sign his brother. Okay, what happened? Chelsea took two seasons away from Scott Parker's career that he would never be able to get back. Len Johnson was at the club around the same time, and perhaps the Blues had planned uh, on integrating English prospects into the starting eleven, but it didn't pan out. Both Parker and Johnson have enjoyed success after leaving Chelsea, but at Chelsea, nothing. Okay, this is a guy that belongs to, this is one player that was born at sea, okay? Christopher Samba. I'm sure you guys know this guy from Anzi Mashaskala, to keep for 12.5 million in 2013. Well, he did not bring the samba. Out. Christopher came, but the samba, mm, the samba was lost somewhere. Yeah, because the name, the name was why they signed him as Samba, Christopher Samba. Somebody bobo. He bought him somebody bobo. Okay. I, I don't think that was a period that that song was running. So let's go get somebody bobo to come and play some samba for more for us. <laughs> oh, Buniki is the name of a musician in Delta State. I still think that when Christopher Samba is right and fit, he's up there with any central defender in the Premier League. But he was on feet when he came to us. Queen's Park Rangers manager Harry Redknapp wrote in his autobiography. I have the autobiography here in the office. I'm not even opening it. After one very, one very poor performance 
his confidence completely fell apart. Okay, why weren't Kripe, Kripe Aru aware of Samba's fitness issue? Did they monitor his performance for Anzi Machashkala via scouting reports and statistical data? This thing seems simple, but given that they have just uh, Ose Bosingwa, uh, one of the worst play, uh, one of the worst player in the Roman Abramovich era, a salary that matched what world class defenders earn, you are not quite sure if Kipiaro did their research on Samba. The drive Samba had shown at Blackburn Rovers was missing when he was at Queen's Park Rangers. Now, let me tell you something about this. You know how, when we talk about the MPFF, we're always very quick to say, oh, MPFF does not have this, does not have that. The, the, the thing is, what you guys always see in leagues like the Premier League here, there are maybe four or five clubs that have it going. Everything is working well. Everything is perfect. And then you use the anointing of those people to judge the other club. You see, in the Premier League, there are so many rubbish clubs not properly run, administration is zero. Some club in Nigeria are even well run than them. The side players, rubbish, no scout. They'll put one, one coach there, and the coach is the general manager, is the bus driver, is the curator, is everything. Even as not under as that's poor administration. But because you people just like, especially black people, like anything that a white person is doing. Under Asen Wenger, uh, Asna was a poorly run club, was one of the worst club in terms of management, in terms of structure. But hey, who am I to judge? Wenger knows best. Now there's this guy who came from Aravan to Middlesbrough. You know, there was a time when Middlesbrough had money. Middlesbrough was almost becoming a millionaire club. They were signing player, they signed Junio, they signed Thomas Ravanali, they went and go and get this guy. Yes, I, 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 Alfonso. Alfonso was a good, good Brazilian player. 12.7. They came to the Premiership. There were no samba. There were no places to see naked women dance. Well, you know, English people are too conservative. They are too different. Their way of life was different. No, Jai Jai. And, you know, Midris Bro is far from Peckham. And maybe if he was staying around Peckham, he would have enjoyed his life. Peckham, the Obalan Day of England. Okay. Uh, but that didn't happen. Okay. Uh, in hindsight, the whispers of Alfonso Alves' attitude issues should have been taken more seriously. It was petulant, it was narcissist, and above all, very selfish on and off the field. Yet, for one glorious season at Everin, Alves was one of the best finishers in Europe. Middlesbrough looked at the mind blowing number 48 goals in at least 48 games. I went all in. Like, this is it. We are going to get Ronaldo da Lima. We will sign him and bring it. I met with the new Ronaldo da Lima. We'll bring it to England. And we'll score 200 goals. We'll create more chances. We'll give him more salary. And we'll make him the best player in the world. And we'll probably make compete against Manchester United and Liverpool. And we'll show who we are. We'll mirrors go. Mirrors go going to the finals. Mirrors go going to the finals. Oh, we are. That didn't happen. <laughs> oh, God. He has since wasted the prime years of his career in the Middle East, strolling on the field and earning obscene amount of money. Why not be challenged? Okay. When my sister, nobody talks shall. Okay. Uh, could have rectified his reputation by moving to another European club in an elite league, but he chose not to. Now, your business. Yes. Christmas Carol. So one January transfer that still baffles me to today is how Liverpool paid 35 million pounds in 2011 for Andy Christmas Carol. This guy is a good writer now, but back in the day, Andy Carol, Jesus Christ. Oh shit. Okay. Lesson one, don't buy a limited English forward for 35 million pounds. Lesson two, don't buy him when he has injury issue. Lesson three, no less than three. Just take one or two. Liverpool learned the hard way, and now West Ham United, a club that spent 15 million on Andy Carroll, are also wondering if it was worth it. And then number two. This player, I can't really say he's a bad player, but people say he's a bad player. So let me just take it, okay? The, number two is David Lewis. Benfica to Chelsea for 21.3 million and uh, the Major Matic in 2011, okay? So let's see how these two guys pan out for us. In the league, in the League Cup defeat to Sunderland, one David Lewis moment a summed up why he would never be a world-class defender at Chelsea to multiply to, uh, for multiple seasons. Okay, for whatever reason, once he put on a Chelsea shirt, is devoid of positional ability. With Max Schweizer out of position, 
Lewis was on the near post anticipating a shot from the right-footed Fabio Borini, who was, you know, shooting on a right angle. The only way the ball was going to find the back of the net was through a gap. Lo and behold, Lewis had the angles all wrong and kept his leg wide open. Borini scored and Sunderland are back in the game. They would later win it in extra time via King Song Yu. Mistakes like this happens all the time with Lewis. Uh -uh. What makes the deal even worse is that the Majamatic is now worth more than 20 million. So essentially, Chelsea paid Benfica around 41.3 million for a frustratingly inconsistent centre back. I like him though, but then he came to us now and showed us why such a player should not play for us. But the on guard pata pata of them all, your guess is as good as mine. Of the player signed in January, who was a lion of the tribe of where he was and came and became the Okuko. Not even a pussycat. It was the Okuko of the tribe of the new community that he brought him to. Is Fernando El Nuno Torres. Liverpool to Chelsea for 50 million. When Roman Abramovich was not holding back. Chelsea have always had owners who don't hold back the cash. Whether it's Ken Bates or Roman Abramovich or now Todd Bolling. That depends on <laughs> what's that guy called again? Uh, uh, Fabrizio Romano to sign player. Fernando Antonio Torres was the was in decline in his last season for Liverpool, scoring uh, nine goals in 26 games. His worst return in his Liverpool career. Chelsea logic pay Liverpool 15 million for Torres, uh, whose best game during the struggling season came against Chelsea. Chelsea always buy player who play well against them anyway. Look at what Luis Suarez does for Liverpool and compare it to Torres at Chelsea. Suarez scored more Premier League goals in 25 minutes against Norwich City, <laughs> three, uh, would finish uh, the game with four that Torres has done so far in two games. Okay, that's just the way it is. Tomorrow, I'll tell you some of the good ones so that it's not just bad, 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 bad news that I'm bearing. Well, 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 well. I'm say, we'll be putting comments and you're not reading them. What, what is wrong with you? Well, I'm going to read your comments and round up the show with that. But I hope that you've had fun with my shenanigans and my play on the show today. Yes, Senator Sam, uh, Steve Moses, thank you very much. Stay up in time in land. Uh, CR7 going to Inter Milan, Lukaku the Great, only one person to talk all that nonsense. Everything that he just said is, hey, something just, yeah, oh. Shabba Egwaje say, good evening from Melbourne. How you doing, bro? Good evening to you as well. I'm having fun in the studio today. Sometimes you can really have fun being alone. I used to think that if you do a show alone, you don't have fun. No, that's changed. That impression of change. Big Sammy underscore OG say, Arsenal should I jack Leeds uh, offer for Western McKinney would be a good replacement for Thomas Party off the bench. I don't like him. We should not hijack him. He should go to where he's going to. I don't like that player. I tell America, America, I don't I, like I don't really rate American footballer anyway. So yes, American should get angry. I don't care. This is not basketball. We should get at need better player that can play better football, not the one that will go and be putting us in, 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 in bad sports. Right, let me go to YouTube. Whoa, comment is much. Yeah, starting from the very beginning, the other one you say. Oga versus Amoshe. Okay, match today. We shall see. Emmanuel is say good morning, and then he's laughing. And then Oduni Rumileka say good morning, boss. Man, good morning to you. And I want to say, everyone, I watched uh, Jesus and Zinchenko have been so important to Arsenal this season. And then he say, I don't conclude, say, Pepe, no go ever set players to Arsenal again uh, if he like. Make it be their third goalkeeper uh, choice, safe. Okay, and Johnny Gaffa came in and gave us 49, uh, 4.49 uh, pounds. Okay, say congratulations to Daffy and the team on the successful coverage of the MP. Thank you very much, bro. And Timothy Deimbo, one of our marvelous, majestic, amazing reporter, said, uh, and I really love the crew to be in a career. I know you're planning to come and meet us there. I was also planning that we would hook up, we'll give you a surprise package, but hey, that didn't happen. I'm sorry about that. Life goes on. Okay, additional of my say good morning, Elegante family. Good morning to you. And I say, uh, may God not take a video. Yeah, Asana should still look for a striker. I think so too. Samuel Karim will say, I know stream MPL life again. Uh, I don't understand. 
that your question is not clear, please you can make it clear if you want to. God's will, Obukamena Awari, same bro as Bingo of Rendo. He said, I believe Arsenal should win tonight and counter, even though it seems Man City are picking up gradually now. If Arsenal win, it will surprise me. I'm not expecting Ateta to play full squad. I'm expecting him to rest the player and focus on next game against uh, Man City and uh, focus on that one instead of... Because the FA Cup is not important. I mean, that's not a 14 FA Cup. What, what, what are you trying to win the FA Cup for? Focus on winning the league, the Premier League, and also the Europa Cup if you can. That would make sense. If Arsenal don't win the league and win the FA Cup, it be useless. It's the same of the same. So just focus on winning the league. I'll be very glad. If they, that's why I was very excited when they got knocked out of the Carabao Cup. Because it's not something that we win. It's not something that's important to us. It's not something that's of value. But let's see how it goes anyway. That's uh, what I say. Uh, that's what Bukamena Mena Awari say. No, is that where I was? No, that's not where I was. Uh, and this allow for my say, I know I swear yet, no, they try at all. I know I should brand and not just sell, uh, with what he has done. God only knows what he has signed with his agent. Well, I, that, that's that's the way I can put it as well. And then, uh, that's what Bukamena Mena Awari say, I not understand, sir. I think, say, club, no, uh, club go flood Paul agent to sign up. But uh, I'm really surprised. Say I know even they hear his name at all, at all. Okay, all our Nigerian players agent, eh? No, they try at all. I think there is poor media around him. Even if the agent, even if the agent, eh? No, they try. The media suppose like his own media suppose to do well. When an agent goes to push media around them, shop. Look at Victor Sim. I don't think he's got a special agent per se, but he's playing. And then there is media balls around Victor Sim. Like you cannot not notice him. Like it's just not possible. You can't wake up and not talk about it. Okay, that's what I went and said, bro, that money small, 105 million, the money suppose uh, they reach like 150 million. Johnny Gava, I said, I hope United get a simmer, but I fear they are fixated on this hurricane. Hurricane is at the end of his game. And I know that some people argue, hey, Rabbi Van Persie was at the end of his game, Teddy Sheridan was at the end of his game, Manchester United are used to that. But Manchester United don't have a coach called Silas Ferguson right now who is crook and also know how to manipulate referees. So, let's see how it goes anyway. Yorokiri Manuel, my lovely brother, Semigo Bros, when he say Arsenal must lose, wish and wish and wish. I know that there's a wish in my house and you're the one. Uh, Yorokiri Manuel went on to say, CR7, don't turn Jonah. Any boat he enter, they are capsizing, so they had to throw him out of the boat before they could capsize. Shark, need to swallow that guy. The other one, you say, I beg of Simeon, win the league before leaving Italy. He definitely would. I think I'll talk to him later. I'll have a chat with him later. He definitely, he's not going to leave this January. He, he, I mean, would you sell to Simeon right now? It doesn't make sense. Even if they give you 250 million, does it make sense to sell to Simeon right now? It doesn't make sense. But do you remember, like I said, today, March, now that game for the double header in EPL. Okay. Peter, I wonder, I say nothing come out from fish head who, uh, for inside that uh, Boros deal at all. Nothing. Is it Patrick? He said good morning. And uh, and the Carol, uh, and then he said, What does he say? I've been uh, and the Carol is worse for me because <laughs> you're a Liverpool fan. But then I'm like, I say, Where is Benedict? Okay, Benedict is busy. Uh, so it's going to be me and me alone. Cheese over justice. Torres' goal against Barcelona is the 50 million pound return on investment. <laughs> okay, I agree. I said, I take it. Okay, I take it. Uh, on Instagram, uh, big of Potaka to say, I love your show. Thank you very much, bro. I appreciate that one. Thank you for loving my show. Thank you for watching it. And then, uh, Oludo Ole David, he said, Hello, good morning, good morning to you. And I want to say greetings, bros. Who do you think Arsenal should sign for midfield? Okay, I think there's a guy in Barcelona, uh, who left AC Milan for Barcelona, uh, but it's not playing games. Uh, Frankie Kessi. I think that's a, a player that Arsenal should sign, but I don't know how much it will cost uh, them. Uh, but then again, the way Ateta plays, he would uh, probably need a player in the mode of Fernandinho, a very calm player who is not a water stirrer, uh, who is not a Michaelisian type. Okay? The problem with Frankie Kessi is Frankie Kessi plays with a, a high shoulder, with his hand spread. That will cost a whole lot of fun. That's why he's not playing for Barcelona. Uh, if the coach can tell him to put on his hand and play well, Maybe that's a guy that they need because he knows how to break play. He knows how to play. I'm not really a Declan Rice fan. And I know that's not going to get him now. Maybe in the summer. But then again, they should just look for someone who have a workman-like attitude, who have a sane head. You need a leader. 
Somebody who have a senate who's not too hungry to go forward and forget his position. Player will position this. I can't suggest anybody right now off the top of my head, but I think that that's not need a backup for Thomas Party. Thomas Party gets injured, the season might be over. And then he's already injured. We all know that Iwilo Lokomba is just there. That one is another transfer failure that we'll discuss in the years to come. Okay? The way we'll discuss Nicolas Pepe in the years to come as the worst ever player to ever play football. Yeah, nobody's going to convince me of that one. I don't think if you know anybody that's worse than him, please remind me. There's no player that's worse than that guy. That's the worst ever player I've ever seen play football. Cheers over, uh, Joshua. I say, God bless you. Your handbook. Thank you very much. Guess what? Uh, a book of man I want to say. That's true. Osime really knows have a good media PR. Yes. Is it Patrick say, I actually tell Percy say, you go day Akure. Oh, yes, I plan to be in Akure, but hey, uh, uh, second, Nigeria happened. Nigeria, this is Nigeria and it happens. Uh, Chibuike Okonkwa, he said, I love asthma so much. Good. Um, I hope you love your, your dreams and your studies and whatever it is you do, just as much as you love asthma. Is it Patrick? He said, even though he's currently uh, sidelined, for Sunshine Stars. Who's that? I don't know who you just mentioned. Uh, uh, okay, the person you told that I'm coming to Korea. Oh, sorry. Um, I'm not making it to Korea. Chooks 9000, they say, about Lokonga, you said worst thing about Eddie Nketiah. Well, I didn't say worst thing about Eddie Nketiah. I said the reality about Eddie Nketiah. And I, I need to correct some impressions that people have. Okay, Eddie Nketiah is one that slipped through the crack. But I'm going to ask this question. If Arsenal is going to go the whole season, would you beat your chest if Arsenal says, you know what, if, if a doctor come at night today and say, Gabriel Jesus is not going to be available to the end of the season, would you be comfortable to have Eddie Nketiah as the only guy leading your attack? No. Eddie Nketiah is scoring goals. 99, fantastic, doing well, poachers go. But he's still not a guy that I will bank on. And uh, Lokonga has played in more games that Arsenal have lost than games that they've won. So it is the evidence on ground. It's not just what I say. It is the evidence on ground. If the evidence doesn't back him, it doesn't back him. But I understand you're an Arsenal fan, so it means that sentiment will be... That's what fans do, right? They are so sentimental, and sentiment makes people blind. It's the, the same voters' contest that make you fall in love that also controls your sentiment. But the truth is, my job, even I'm an Arsenal fan, is to be objective. And in being objective, I'm going to say the way it is. Look at the whole Premier League, top teams in the Premier League, from number 10 to number 1. Only Asna would have a player like Eddie Nketiah leading the line. So this is one of those seasons you say Asna have been lucky that everybody is coming through. This is not one of those seasons. I mean, a team that I've had, Robbie Van Persie, Terry Henry, Jose Antonio Reyes, uh, Eduardo Da Silva, uh, what's it called? A, 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 what's it called? Emmanuel Adebayor, even Lord Brentner. Now you have Eddie Ketia leading your line in the Premier League. I mean, let's shift. Eddie Ketia, no matter what he does who, by my book, so it's not in the rank and file of those guys from Arrive, Dennis Beckham, Nicholas Aneka, Cherry Horry, Kano Wankwo, up until now. It's not above any one of those guys. And for that reason, I still worry. I still think that the whole team on Asna is doing well. But beyond that, a lot of the other teams that are chasing Asna are also not doing well. If this was that race that Liverpool and Man City have, Asna don't come up for top position. The other teams are just not doing well, dropping points where they shouldn't drop points. So it's making it look like, oh, there's daylight between them. You know what will happen? The day Asna gets out of that top position, even you will come here and blame the Because you will not remember that Newcastle game that I mean, he could have won you for won for you, but it, it didn't happen. Big Sammy underscore OG say Paul Onuashu has been reportedly linked to Salalitania and Frankfurt this January window. That's the kind of thing that a goal scorer like that should be linked up to. If they link Osime to Salalitania, you know, go best. Eh? Sammy Boy 014 say, given choice between EPL or Europa, which one would you think Arsenal should prioritize? Straight up. The champ, the Premier League. What's Europa? Who, who Europa? Had? Premier League because Europa is if you're not going to make the top four, go and win Europa. So that you play Champions League. Top four is already almost guaranteed. Top four is seven games and a, seven wins and a draw away, and it's automatically guaranteed out of nineteen games. Come on, if you don't forget to buy anything that anybody wants to say. Uh, okay, let me ask this question. Chelsea is looking for a striker right now. 
would Chelsea fans jump to the high heaven if they announced that Todd Bolly wants to pay whatever the release clause or whatever amount for Eddie Nketiah? Would Chelsea fans say that they discovered the striker? The answer is no. And then again, as it is today, if Arsenal go out there and sign even a Mitrovic, would Nketiah bench a Mitrovic? The answer again is no. So when you look at it, it's not about what I say. Would you gladly, as it is right now, choose? Would you gladly say uh, Arsenal should not sign a defensive midfielder because they have CB Lokonga in that team? Would you gladly say it? And then let's start praying that, that Thomas Pante should get injured. And then CB come and play and lead Arsenal to the title. No. So uh, it's not about what I've said. It's about the reality of the player quality not being good enough for the team that he's playing for. Let's not forget, he signed for a team that has never made the top four in God knows how long. A team that is not a title contender in 19 years going on 20. So now that he's playing at this level, the, the expectations have changed. But unfortunately, the quality of the player have not risen up. That's the thing that we should all understand. But then as a roundup, let me read the last few messages that have come in. Uh, uh, Patrick, is it Patrick say, bros, you should say, he can't tell you watch your show. I mean, it's online, so he could. Chibuka Koko, it's a good job, bro. Keep it up. You're okay, man. I said, Chelsea always have these kind of players. Torres against Barcelona, money well spent. Harvard goal against City, money well spent. I agree with you. Owoye, Oyeride, he said, good morning, Oga, Idafe, Gabriel, Obatan, can't be better than Pepe. No, he's better than Pepe. He's better. Did they spend 72 million on Gabriel Bata? So, because we have to compare the two now. We have to also compare the price tag, the salaries, and everything. Nicolas Pepe, no better reach anybody. Even Ogbori play our coach for worry, better pass. Uh, one boy, they call Olani Yajai, my defender. We are not know if you trust her with match. Even Arubi, better pass Nicolas Pepe. Well, this is how I draw the curtain on the show. Okay, no, 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 no. There's a few messages here on Instagram. Uh, Sabi Boy double, uh, 014 four said, but Arsenal has never won Europe, but has already won the EPL. Who cares about the Europa? Europa is a, is a means to an end, it's not an end. The Premier League is an end. Europa, no, and nobody cares. It's not, I, I don't know any Arsenal fan that wants to win the Europa over the Premier League. I don't know any Arsenal fan, I don't know any Arsenal player who would choose to win Europa over who, who Europa. Throw away that in Mulik Cup. Is that better team? Should say not Arsenal need a DM ASAP. But at the same time, Lokonga are prosper. Nobody's talking prosper. When you're chasing title, you don't use Mass City not use prospect to win Premier League. They use quality to win Premier League. Last season, they would have lost the title. They were looking at prospect. When they needed somebody to come to rescue, they brought in the, the Ike Gondoga. That's the question. If Arsenal is playing Man City, in the final game of the season, they need to win. First half, 30 minutes into the game, and the game is 0-0, and their party gets injured. And they look to the bench and say, Lokonga, go warm up. You, where you see that, you never already calculate, say, Arsenal, don't lose the match. That's the thing. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Shouldn't be arguing with you, son. Like, uh, all those people, they go argue for, for, for newspaper stand. People don't have a ball. I won't follow, follow the argue. Well, this is where I know the cutting on the show. Thank you very much, guys. My name is Idafi Matthias. So I'm going to love to come and on the spot. It's been a nice time until Chooks came in here with his asthma insanity. Bye-bye and have a wonderful day. <laughs>